Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this video. I'm the creator of Flower Pro and the NL Collection by Katie Sue Design. But in this video, I'm going to talk about a brand new Katie Sue product. So let's get started. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you and talk about how to use this brand new Katie Sue product. Now, this is the new measuring mold. Um, so this consists in the pack of three parts. First of all, we have the silicone mold, which I'm going to talk much more about, obviously, in this video, how we use this and how we use this for measuring. It also comes with the new flexi scraper, so which we also use in Flower Pro as well. So this flexi scraper is wonderful for most of the Katie Sue molds, but this is really useful uh, for using to get perfect um, amount of product into the paste into the mold. All right. And then it comes with the uh, this is the measuring mold. This is the color guide. Now, um, this color guide, which I developed and obviously did all the custom colors in here, um, was developed specifically for using with hardy air drying clay. Because the hardy clay, um, the pigments are very strong, most of the time when I'm using this product, um, when I'm doing colors, I'm going to use the white. And then I would then add some of the uh, nine colors that are available to that to change obviously the, the strength of the color, the intensity. So sometimes of course I use the product straight out of the pack, like for example for making just like regular red roses. But a lot of times when I'm using especially the colors like pink and colors like that, I will obviously um, want to use them a little lighter. So I will take some of the pink and add to the white. And of course you can totally do this with a, you know, guessing the amount you put in. But this is going to help you get consistent color every time. So in this, um, as I said, this is the chart. And so the chart has two parts to it. So first of all, we're going to talk about this part here. Now, these are all of the um, ombre. Ombre refers to a color where you then become lighter and lighter and lighter. And so in cake decorating, for example, ombre is something we use a lot of times on a cake. You could do like ombre ruffles. But this shows the uh, the nine colors that uh, the hardy clay comes in and it shows the sort of the color guide to what sort of color shade you will obviously uh, achieve by mixing different amounts of the base color in with the white. Now these are all custom colors that I've developed with the hardy clay and these are uh, wonderful especially for making sort of realistic flowers because this goes through uh, showing how to use you know lime green eucalyptus and I'm going to talk a little bit more about these later on and explain about how we use these as well. So anyway let's get started and we're going to talk about the first use which is to create these ombre shades. So here we uh, have the colors that are shown in the coloring guide. All right, so this goes through the first, obviously, uh, five colors. And uh, you can see here, this shows the color straight out of the pack. So when, for example, you're using, let's say, the red hardy clay, all right, this would be the color that will come out. It's a beautiful, like, cherry red color, okay? And by adding white to it in different amounts using the measuring mold, you can see how the colors will go right the way down. So here you have really nice colors for sort of like this one here for like skin tones and uh, obviously a blush color here. And this will go down to a really, really light blush. And again, you know, for lighter skin tones as well. You know, obviously there are many different skin tones we can achieve here. But as I said, just gives you ideas for the sort of the, those sort of colors. But also when you look at this and you look at, for example, this very soft, pale, peachy color, um, it just shows you the scope of obviously the color range. All right. So this is obviously using the, um, the uh, largest amount of color and this is using the smallest amount. But so you can use your guide um, and as obviously going to explain how to use that. And here we have, of course, next color we're going to talk about would be the magenta. Now, I use the magenta a lot. I use this a lot in my classes. Uh, so, for example, working in hardy clay, um, these flowers are all made with the air drying clay here. And what I've done here is with the pink there, I've actually used this second to last color, uh, pink, and that is the base color I use for making my roses, all right? Um, so if you wanted to make, of course, flowers like, say, peonies and colors of flowers like that, you would be sort of in this sort of range here, okay? And then of course, like for roses, you probably would be more in this color. But of course, you can also see making this strong, straight out of the pack color is really, really intense. This makes a beautiful red rose, the more towards a little bit like a burgundy color. But as I said, so this is a, just gives you an idea of the scope of colors. Um, and then we move on to the orange. So the orange, uh, which will be the next color here. 
Um, and again, the orange, you can see this is the orange hardy clay. And so with the orange color there, that color can be used again. You can see how when you come down uh, to the sort of the, the sort of the lighter golden yellow colors as well. And then again, right through to almost like a cream. So again, if you were making, say, especially with air drying clay flowers, you wanted to make some cream colored roses, you know, you could be working in this sort of range here. But as I explained, of course, I'm talking more about floral, but of course, if you're doing like little decorations on cards or you're doing things in air drying clay on gifts and things like this, this just gives you an idea of what sort of color range you have from the orange. And then we move on to the yellow. Okay, so this is just showing you, and these come in 50 gram packs, which is approximately two ounce packs. And of course, these go a very long way, and especially when you're using the lighter, the lighter color combinations here. But you can see you've got this beautiful bright yellow, like with daffodils, flowers like that. And again, we come down to the sort of mid yellows, and then of course to again more of a sort of creamy yellow color. So if you're doing like things for, let's say, like a baby. A baby shower cake or a little christening uh, decoration to go on a card. So you've got your baby pink, you have your baby yellow, you have your baby blue. All right, so it gives you an idea for, as I said, other applications. Um, and then the blue color, again, blue is obviously, um, again, very concentrated color. Remember, all of the hardy clays, the base colors, as you can see here, are very concentrated. And they're made to be mixed with white when needed, because very rarely, personally, very rarely do I ever use them straight from the pack. I'm normally always going to add a little bit of white or sometimes more white, depending on what project I'm making. But again, the blue, you can see you have these uh, lovely darker blues. And then of course, you know, when you get down to, let's say more for floral, like for peri uh, for flowers like uh, forget-me-nots and things like that, you would be in this sort of color range, baby blue here. Um, and then of course, you know, for other projects, you could of course use this with, um, with the darker blue. So really, really beautiful colors. Um, and then finishing up here, these are the other uh, four colors, okay? So of course we have the black. Um, so this is the black hardy clay here. And the black hardy clay, again, of course, we uh, use black on it in its own, but of course also when we're doing um, things in gray, you know, gray is a huge trend color. So when you're making home decor and things like that, the gray, but you see how you get these lovely like soft gray colors. All right, so uh, very, very useful for, as I said, again, just showing you the scope of obviously the black. And then uh, we have the brown. All right, this is the brown um, air, hardy, air drying clay. So again, the brown, you have a really dark chocolate brown. So, you know, if you're doing, of course, things like sunflowers or flowers of uh, home decor where you want like a dark chocolate brown, you, know, you could be in like this straight out of the pack or in this range here. And then again, you're gonna go through to these lovely soft browns. And again, you get these nice sort of taupey colors, okay? So again, for, you know, doing things, uh, home decor and that with air drying clay, um, you could, this is a very useful color. Um, then second to last part, we have the green. Now the dark green has got quite a lot of black in it, all right? So it is quite, it is a dark green. And you can see it's very much almost like a military green color straight from the pack. Um, so most of the time with that one particular, I would generally be using it sort of lightened. And you can see again, but here you can see how you go through these lovely like sage colors. Um, so when you want more of a sagey green color, and again, through to the very, very pale greens, all right? So you get these really nice soft green colors. Um, again, really, really nice colors to use. Many, many, you can see the range is quite considerable throughout the, um, obviously, the, the colors used in the mold. And then finally, we have the, what is just called green, all right? So this is just the green color here. And the green color, again, you can see, um, so when I'm doing like sort of like some of the colors I use, I'll often mix the green and white together. So sort of to create more of this color. So like, for example, when I made these, um, these leaves here uh, for the roses, I actually used um, this sort of color here, okay? So that's just adding some of the green to the white. But again, you can see how you go through to the really, really soft peppermint, like mint green colors, really, really nice and uh, fresh colors. And again, the really, really soft greens. So that just shows you um, the scope of um, obviously the ombre effect where we're lightening it with uh, white and uh, taking white and adding the color to it. So now I'm gonna show you how the mold actually works. So when we use the coloring guide, all right, this is your color guide. So this is just really what I've shown you actually in the guide here. Um, so, you know, when you're making a flower, so for example, let's say you wanted to make a rose and uh, you want sort of like, I'm gonna show you actually how I make this sort of paler pink rose here. 
And uh, so that is going to be, um, obviously I'm going to be using number nine. Now on the um, silicone mold, all right, there are numbers on here. So you can see it actually number one, all right, so it's got number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So number one, you're going to use that for white, okay, uh, for what we're doing here. When we move on to the custom colors, I'll explain about obviously how that works there. But this is number one, so that would be made in white, okay. And then uh, what you would then do is then you would then either use a number two, a number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten of the magenta added to the white. And what that will do, that would give you this color here, okay? So, um, so I'm going to be using a number nine, which is this little tiny one here of the magenta. And then I'm going to be using a number one of white. Now, um, if you haven't watched my uh, other video I did for Katie Sue Designs, I have another video which is Fundamentals of Air Drying Clay. And on there I talk a lot about, you know, um, how to keep it, to store it, to stop it drying out. I talk also a little bit about, you know, on there I actually show this mold very basically, um, how to use this. And I talk a lot about using the air drying clay, how to soften it if it gets a little dry by adding water. So make sure you check that out if you haven't watched it. Now with the air drying clay, you know, it is, um, I said this is a little bit of some things from the first video, but uh, I generally, when I'm keeping my air drying clay, I keep it in a bag like this. Um, and then what I do is I would generally keep this into like a plastic container, like a storage container, a plastic bucket, you know, just something with a lid on it, because that will help, because you want to make sure no air gets into there. And what I do is when I'm using the air drying clay, I would generally just uh, cut a fairly small part off the end of it. Will take a very fairly small hole. Now, white, of course, I use a lot. So, um, so then you can just squeeze out. What I wouldn't suggest you do is like open the whole pack because the air will get to it. So you just cut it out. Now, when you're doing, for example, like the colors, like a color like brown, I don't use a lot, and I'm using very small amounts of that. Okay. So what I do there is I just cut, literally, just cut the end off with a pair of scissors, just the end of the bag. And what that means is I can sort of squeeze out what I need. All right. So I can take out what I need. Then I can just push the rest of the paste back into the bag. So you see how what I'm doing is I'm just putting that back into the bag. And then I'm going to fold that over. And then you can either use like a little tiny mini bulldog clip like that. That helps. Or something else I found works really well is just like masking tape, painter's tape. And what I personally you do is I, this is just like a wet wipe, a wet one. And what I normally do is I would just sort of keep that. And I just sort of wrap that around and put it in a plastic bag. And what this does is going to keep the environment in the bag moist. And of course, you know, the, the little wrap, the, uh, the mat here won't dry out, all right? The little, uh, um, and as I said, it keeps it moist inside. And I've never experienced any problems with having the product dry out. Um, if, of course, you left this just out, it's going to dry, okay? But as I said, so generally a small, small amount of um, the paste would go there like so. And of course, you could just use this. And then um, something I've recently come across that I really love are these Mylar bags. And you can find these like on Amazon and online stores. And these are made from Mylar, all right? So if you just do a search on Mylar bags. And the ones I'm using here are clear on the front. And then they have like, this is a silver back. This one is clear with like a black back, but you can get them in all different colors. Um, but I found these work really well, better than actually like little um, zip bags, so little thing top bags. Um, because the air doesn't get to them because they're thicker and they have this like double seal on them. Um, so if you are going to sort of custom color or you're taking out a little bit more paste than you need, you can just keep that in there like so. But these work really well. Um, and you can, if you have a heat sealer, you know, if you're doing custom colors, you can even heat seal across there as well with a heat sealer. And then when you want to obviously get in there, you just will cut it and then open it up. Like we sometimes buy sprinkles or goods. Uh, for the supermarket with this type of packaging. But anyway, so um, when you're using the product, so this is the, um, the, as I said, the main part of the mold. So this is going to be the number one. And uh, so, for example, you have to calculate like how much you need. Now, one of these, um, a number one shape, all right, a number one shape here. So when you, I'll show you how to fill the mold in a second, but when you fill the mold up level, all right, you make sure that's level in the mold like that. It's going to pop that out. Now, when you pop it out, you can use, um, this is my companion tool, which is my Flower Pro product. So you can buy this from Kitty Sue. And, uh, but this works great to just pop that out, all right? Now, but that is actually weighs 3.5 grams. Now, this is a high precision scale, all right? So this is a high precision digital scale. 
Um, so just zeroing it out now. And um, so when you use this, as you can see, that weighs 3.5 grams. Now this will weigh one tenth of a gram, okay? So the thing is, is if you don't have a scale like this, um, you of course you could do seven grams on a regular scale, but as I say, using this, so like if I needed, like for example, this would be um, about enough to make a rose, but if I was doing a rose and a bud, I would use double this. So if you, you can either do two number ones, all right, and you do two number nines of pink and mix it together. But as I said, I've got on the instructions here, so it does tell you here that it weighs, um, it weighs 3.5 grams. So basically, if you wanted four times this amount for a project, you can also just scale out 14 grams of your white. Now, um, the reason why the mold works better than, for example, like this is my Flower Pro size guide, which some of you have seen on videos, is the size guide is um, good for, obviously, when we're measuring particular projects from my Flower Pro book one, two, and three, and from my videos. But the thing is, is that the proportions of this are a little bit different. This has been made so that then you get more of this gradient. So if you wanted to make a ombre effect, you can use this as well on cake. And um, so this works really, really well. And because also the fact that you're actually filling the mold completely level, it's also a little bit more accurate than the size guide measuring because the size guide measuring, you know, for example, we use one third below, two thirds above, but sometimes my students might be a little bit more generous or a little less, so that could change the shade. But also what this means is every time you make with the air drying clay, every time, for example, I make this color, all right, using this technique, I will get exactly the same um, color. Now, in my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, I've had a lot of students ask me, um, well, how much does, for example, like a number one or a number two weigh, all right, from the size guide? The thing with that is even with a high precision scale like this, which measures a very accurate scale, which measures one tenth of a gram, in air drying clay, because air drying clay is very, very lightweight, those first about seven won't even register on the air dry on the uh, scale, digital scale. So this is really just a different concept, but as I said, a little bit more accurate. It's designed specifically for air drying clay, but also will work for example, sugar as well, okay? Now, of course, the thing to remember is when you buy Let's say I use different brands of gum paste or flour paste. So I use, for example, like um, Renshaw red flour modeling paste or gum paste. They also use sugar in uh, red uh, flour paste as well. The colors of those are going to be a little bit different than the pigment. So especially when you talk about pink, when you buy a lot of the brands of pre-colored flour paste or gum paste in pink, they're not going to be such a strong color as this. All right. So you're ultimately your color, your colors would vary if you're using different pre-colored sugar paste or flour paste. So because you could also do this for figure modeling with sugar paste as well. But as I said, the color you start off with is going to obviously this is based on the uh, chart and guide is based on the hardy clay. Now the hardy colors are very um, saturated colors, but the other thing with them is, is that also the color won't fade. So the advantage of making, for example, um, hardy clay roses using the pink hardy, magenta hardy clay, rather than say food gel color, is the color is gonna say in 10 years time, this rose would still be exactly the same pink. Whereas if we took food colors, uh, those of you that do cake and things know that some of the colors will fade out, all right? But anyway, so that, that's sort of, as I said, how you would use the, um, how you would use the, um, to, as far as the sizing goes. So that information is all in a little chart. Now, so what we do here is gonna just take some of your white paste. You see, I can just push this out. And literally all I'm gonna do there is just gonna just push this out. Just gonna fill this up. Just gonna fill this up level. Just needs a little bit more in there. But I've just found this works, as I said, really good. And you're just gonna use your, obviously here, just make sure that is level, all right? So it wants to be totally level there, like so. And then you can just pop that out of the mold, okay? And then it's, of course, if you wanted to color more, you can just squeeze out another two or three of those. And uh, then you're just gonna seal up your bag. And as I said, this will be ready for, I'm gonna show you some other things with that. And then with your pink, all right? So here we just need a number nine of magenta. Now this bag, magenta I use a lot, and I had this from my last class where I was coloring quite a lot of paste. But again, you know, you can just make sure you seal this up well, but just like the wet wipe in there. And then all you're gonna do here is you're gonna literally just gonna fill this mold up here, level. Okay, and that's this is where the little scraper comes in. You're just gonna use your little scraper just to pull off 
the excess paste, all right? So just using your little scraper, you're just gonna just scrape off the excess paste. That would go back into your bag. But as I explained, if you wanted more, you could just make, you know, um, three number ones whites and then uh, three number nine, uh, nine green, uh, pink, all right? But anyway, so this will give me my color. So you see, you just pop that out. And then all you're gonna do now is just gonna mix this through. You see how you're just going to mix this through, but you see that little tiny, tiny piece of pink. What a sort of an amazing color this now becomes. All right. But having the guide there, you sort of shows you the potential of the, you know, when you've obviously add just a little bit of the color, but you get through to those lovely creams and those blushy blush colors and things. But you see her here, we now have the pink. All right. But that means that if I needed to prepare this, um, for a big project, I could just use four times this amount, six times this amount, and then next time I need this, plus any you have left over, you can just store, and then you can just add a little bit more. So it means you're never wasting any, okay? And uh, but that just shows you how you would use, you know. So for something like, as I said, the pink rose there, that would be the color. And of course, I dust a darker pink on the top of the petals. Um, so that is how we use the the guide, all right? The sort of the chart and guide. And uh, so very, very easy to use. And as I said, then, if you were gonna use this as a custom color, I just take my little Mylar bag here, just gonna pop that in. And as I said, this is gonna keep it nice and soft and away from the air, ready for use. So that's the, the guide there. So remember with your, um, you know, colors here. So remember, this just shows your, so remember, this is the uh, color out of the pack, all right? So this is the sort of the color when you take it out of the pack, the color that's going to be. And then, of course, then this is when you um, you add, like we've just added a number nine. But if I wanted, let's say, for example, let's say for peonies, like this color, that would be a number one of white, all right? And then a number six of magenta. And that would give me this beautiful, almost like a fuchsia peony pink color. Um, so that is how we use the, the measuring uh, mold in uh, the first way. So now I'm going to talk about bespoke, which are custom blends. So these are um, a range of colors that um, obviously I've developed with using the measuring mold. And uh, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of greens because for example, with my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, we do a lot of uh, projects in air drying clay. So this enables me going forward to be able to obviously tell the students you know, the members, this is the color we need, like Dusty Miller Green or Lavender or Purple. And so these are just some of the um, obviously most popular colors. Now, green is something when we especially do floral, we need to obviously have the color correct. And so that's something that's quite difficult to, for a lot of people to achieve using the existing green and dark green, but mixing those with colors like magenta, with blue, with yellow and colors like that changes obviously the whole look of the green. So these are our, as I said, lime green, eucalyptus, dusty miller, dark green, leaf green, avocado green, and moss green. So I'm gonna talk about those first, all right? And you can see here, this shows the, the colors here. So here we have the lime green, we have the eucalyptus, we have like the dusty miller uh, green there, we have the uh, dark green, we have the leaf green, we have the and then we have the avocado, and then we have the, the moss green. Now, of course, you can see the amount of paste also, because when you're doing like, for example, uh, the moss green and the dark green, we're using, of course, uh, the amount of balls of paste you add in different sizes is gonna give you different size, whereas these are obviously gonna end up being about the same size as a little bit bigger than the number one, but here you're gonna yield a little bit more. So anyway, so when we are making these, so I'm going to show you, first of all, uh, just the um, third one down, which is going to be Dusty Miller. So Dusty Miller, this is made with my Flower Pro, um, obviously, uh, wedding foliage mold. When we make the Dusty Miller, we're going to make this in this sort of color to start off with. And of course, if you watch the video, we're going to add white dust and things. But this gives you a sort of like a, um, ab sort of like a little bit like a eucalyptus, a lighter eucalyptus color. And so again, on my videos, you have some of the different color combinations. So for the Dusty Miller Green, we're gonna use a number one white, all right? So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna take your mold, and normally I would just fill up all the cavities you need, and then we'd then mix those together. So I've already just prepped my white ones. Sorry, these are a little bit noisy, these bags, but so they work really, really well. But anyway, so this, will, this is gonna obviously just be done level. And just remember with your, just press that down just to make sure that's totally level, but just remember if you have excess, you just trim that off with your 
little flexi scraper. All right, so we need a number one white. Um, then we need a number six green. So we're just going to use the regular green. So remember, there are two greens. So we have the regular green and then we have the, the obviously dark green here. So we need a number six green. So again, just going to push that into the... See, and you just push this in and then you're just going to use your... So you're going to take your little scraper here and then with your little scraper, you're just going to just trim off that excess. All right, so it just wants to be level. And then we're going to move on to dark green. So then we need a number seven of dark green. You can see the dark green is quite, quite, quite a lot darker. It's sort of has like quite a lot of gray black color into it. It's a little bit like I said, a military green. All right, so it's going to be my... And then blue. Then I'm going to add a number 10 of blue. So number 10, of course, is the smallest size right at the end here. Again, it's going to just take your little scraper and you see how that's going to obviously uh, get that in. All right, so those are going to be my colors. And um, then the other thing is, you know, when you're working with the mold, like if you've got like, let's say, for example, you're going to do for the same color, it doesn't matter. Let's, some of the instructions will say like, for example, number six green, number six yellow. You can use the same cavity for green and then you can press the yellow in there because it's all gonna be mixed together. But once you finish, you can just give it a wipe with a wet wipe, um, or as I said, you can just give it a quick wash. You know, you can of course put these in a dishwasher as well, but generally I just wipe them with a wet wipe, a wet one type of product. So you're gonna just take your white out there, your green, your green, and your blue. And then just like I showed on the pink, so then we're just going to just take these three pigments, you see? And of course, if you were doing, if you were going to need more than this, then of course you could just do this um, again, or you could just measure off your two, one set and another set. And just going to mix this through here like that. And of course, the smaller amount, like the blue, takes a little time just to integrate through. But you mix that through. But I said the big advantage of using the hardy clay, as I tell my students, is the color won't change. Whereas if we use like a food color, which you can totally use to color hardy clay white. But the thing is, the food colors are not going to be stable, meaning that they're going to fade fairly easily. All right. But you see how you're going to get your, um, as I said, your color here. All right. And that's going to give you. So that would give me my, my like Dusty Miller. And of course, you could just write on the bags and then you know what color you've got when you're doing custom colors. And as I explained, if you have some left over, then you can just uh, add some more to that or use that next time. So that is how we would do, um, for example, Dusty Miller. So I'm just going to show you some other examples, just a couple of other examples here. Um, moss green. So moss green is a color we use a lot for um, when we're doing, obviously, cakes and things. So and for flowers, roses, things like that. But this is really, as you can see, a more natural green than the green. I mean, this is not really a very natural green, and this is really too dark, but you see how this is really a perfect, like when you're making especially floral, which is what I use most of the time, the hardy clay for, um, you get a more natural green here. So this is like a moss green. I'd use for things like roses. And um, so when we make that, so these are our colors. It looks a bit weird, all right? So we've got um, here for the moss green, number one white, we have number two yellow, number five blue, and number seven magenta. So those, Taking those combination, because the hardy clay is, especially when it's fresh, is a little wet. Just get that out the bag. Of course, you don't have to put it in the bag to which you get it colored. But here we have, as I said, so you've got number one white. We have the number two yellow, number five blue, and number seven magenta. All right, but it seems sort of strange that you'd mix these together and you're going to get a perfect moss green, but it happens. And it actually doesn't have any green in it to start off with. It's just going to be these, you see how you just mix these colors together? which gives a really nice like tie-dye color as well. But it's gonna mix this together here. And it will start to come together because once you get, once you get that magenta in, there's a small amount of the magenta, you see that's just the magenta there. That really changes the whole shade of the green. Just like when we add the lime green, of course we add the yellow to it and that's gonna make it a brighter green. But this is gonna give you this nice mossy color uh, here. Okay, so it's going to give you a moss green. 
moss green color there. All right, so it's going to give you a mossy green color. Okay, so that's how we would make the moss green. But you know, if you're changing from, you know, greens, then just literally just give that a little wipe. And of course, you can also just give your little companion tool a wipe as well. Now, the companion tool comes, um, comes with my ultimate filler flower. It is also sold with the, uh, comes with the, uh, some little different packages, bundles from KD Sue. So it comes with a little mini pad. And then we have another one with the new plastic size guide, because this is our new uh, Flower Pro plastic size guide, which is made from plastic. And as I said, but this just is a different technique, all right? And uh, as I said, we're specifically developed for the hardy clay because the size, the, the size of the cavities are a little different, obviously, than the, those in the, with the uh, size guide. Now, next color, um, in hardy clay, there's no purple, all right, or lavender. So, you know, lavenders and purples are colors we use a lot. For example, when I did with my uh, Flower Pro Members Club, the pansies here, uh, these were made in purple. All right, so when you're wanting sort of like lavender for lilac, you want purple, for example, for pansies and flowers like that. Um, so in the color chart here, this is the lavender, so a beautiful lavender color, and this is a fabulous purple. This is sort of the color I did in my Flower Pro uh, calla lily. Those were sugar, but I made these sort of color calla lilies, all right, the arum lily. But so this is the lavender, this is the purple, all right? So again, difficult colors to achieve. And a lot of times also, uh, even with sugar ones, a lot of times the paste goes very blue. So this is a great as a way of achieving those beautiful colors. So I'm gonna show you the dark purple. So we have a number one white, okay? And then we have number five magenta, number seven yellow, and number seven blue. So of course there I just use the, because the magenta and the uh, blue and the yellow both go in number seven cavity, you just put the yellow in or the blue in, pop it out, then do the second color. And you don't need to worry about cleaning it because it's all gonna be blended together. But again, you can see here, so these colors here, I'm just trying to get these out the bag, there we go. All right, now again, you would never think that that would make that, all right? Um, Obviously, I spent a long time on trying different number combinations, you know, to get obviously it just right. But you see that beautiful color. All right. So literally, as I said, we're just going to put this together. You see how this is starting to come together now. All right. You see how when you mix this through. So now we're going to get this really lovely, fabulous color. Achieved with the here with mixing these colors here, and this is gonna give you your purple. Okay, so here you have your, just mix that right way through. You have your really deep purple. So again, making calories, making pansies, flowers like that. Now, of course, if you wanted, with these um, bespoke colors, all right, so bespoke means custom, with these custom colors, so like, for example, if let's say you were making something and, and this was too dark, of course, you could also use this as a base color and just add that with a little bit of white. Um, so, you know, you can use this almost as a foundation because remember, hardy clay doesn't come in a purple. Um, so this is almost giving you a purple foundation. So if you actually if you did the sort of like the ombre type of effect, you could start off with that as your base color as a dark purple, and then you could literally just add white, white, you know, to, to that, the purple, this base color to, to white, and you're gonna get just the same sort of effect, just but with um, obviously using a custom base color, okay? So that's how we do the purple. And then last one I'm gonna show you is gonna be the deep red. So see, this is gonna give a deep red, so which is obviously, sort of almost like in between those colors, but this is like a blood red color. So this is a color I'd use, let's say for Valentine roses, or if I wanted dark red roses, um, a darker poinsettia, something like that. So for the dark red, so again on our chart here, we have a number one white, number two red, number five magenta, and number six brown. Now brown might surprise you, but this is actually when I do sugar uh, red roses in my Flower Pro videos, I use the, um, actually use some purple and brown into the into the red paste to give it that blood red color. Because you can see this is a lovely red, for example, for poinsettias, all right, but it might not be quite sort of that blood red color you want for your roses. So again, we've got the white and the red. We have the magenta, 
All right, and then we have a little bit of chocolate brown, and that brown color will give you lovely color. So again, you see how when you start mixing this through, but it takes a you know a few seconds just to get that blended through to give you that lovely color. And this is how you would use the product here. All right, but just mix that right the way through. And this will be ready then to make some beautiful red roses. You don't really get any pigment off of it. Unlike food color that stains your hands, the amazing thing about the air drying clay, it doesn't really stain your hands, but it doesn't really, it's not the same sort of as food color pigment. And here you have that beautiful uh, dark red for your, for your roses. Okay. So see, I've shown you here just some custom colors. All right. So these are your custom colors. And of course, these could be mixed up. You could have these ready to go. Um, and that's how you use uh, do the custom colors. But all of the information is on here. All right. So on here, it talks about, you know, each mold cavity is number one to 10. So fill it level with white clay, or you could use fondant, rolled fondant as well, skimming away and then use full strength color. And then you're obviously going to mix that together. And then remember, it talks about the um, obviously the actual number one weighs 3.5 grams. So if you have just a regular kitchen scale, you could of course do seven grams. That would be twice the amount and then add like your other colors using your mold. All right. Um, and uh, the obviously color printed may vary because, you know, obviously these are as close a color as we could get in printing to the actual hardy clay. Um, but this will give you a guide uh, to work with. And as you can see, the colors are pretty true to obviously here the color chart. So I hope you've enjoyed this video showing how to use the new innovative measuring mold by Katie Sue Designs. And we'll have a lot of fun and this will make your life a lot easier when the custom coloring, couture colors, uh, bespoke colors, but also doing ombre and using the obviously chart for reference to get the perfect color every time. Until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes, see you soon, bye.